What is the revenue model for eFarm Direct Portal? The revenue model comes from the subscription fees and the usage fees which the members would be paying to access and utilize the services of the portal. Basically, we start off with a free trial since it's a new feature, a new way of doing business. A lot of people might have doubts of how this might work. So we give everybody a free trial model by which some basic information can be uploaded with some very, very basic features and with certain restrictions in terms of how the data is going to be shared and sent. Once they are comfortable, people would be expected to activate their account. This is similar to creating the first registration or uh, people say a, a mobile company or somebody or say even a, a, a cable company charging for first installation of the equipment. So after that, it is going to be monthly usage charges. So usage could be typically how many queries you run, how many times you call the call center, using the portal to send the SMSs to your counterparties. And certain other value added services would be add-on packs. Like for example, if you want to add a video to your profile, uh, you want to add certain other uh, product brochures and all to your profile. And uh, also if people, uh, if you want somebody to come and verify your records, like for example, your uh, land records, or a geo at your farm or create a, a geo-located uh, profile of your farm. And also sometimes buyers might want uh, certain things to be verified. Like for example, if it's an organic farm, they would like things to be tested. And if they are in a remote location, they can utilize some of these services where uh, independently somebody can go and verify and test the products. All these for additional fees and charges as and when it is required. What about advertisement? We, we are not an advertisement based portal at all. So we won't bother anybody with ad clicks and things like that because we feel that since people themselves are paying, we are very conscious about the privacy of the data itself. So most of the ads would be, for example, a farmer trying to sell his tomato and he's little desperate because it's the last moment. So he might want to put an ad for any buyer. So anybody searching for tomatoes, his ad might come on the, on the site. So typically we expect the stakeholders within the system itself to be placing text ads uh, alerts to other people very very localized to that particular uh, area or unit and also we have analytical reports coming out once again we are not selling private information or contact information of any of our members analytical information will typically be the aggregated demand or supply now, for example what is the demand of tomato or what is the supply of tomato at this point or say one month from now two months from now since we have the dates of when the farmers are producing. So we can even predict it and project the data based on actual data. And we, we are also uh, going to have statistical projections. So that way, like initially, even though the data points may be much less, like for example, in a state, we might have 10,000 records of uh, farmers, but if there are like 10 lakh farmers, we may have to project it. But as the system evolves and we get more and more real data, we'll start realizing that our uh, statistical reports resemble very, very closely to the real situation on the ground which makes a lot of the decision making much more easier and less ad hoc. So the statistical reports are also something which some of the organizations come out of reports, uh, publications and uh, agri journals and institutions would find it uh, very interesting. We also have memberships for other organizations like for example banks and institutions where they can come and uh, take a look at some of the records especially uh, towards uh, financial inclusion where they want to uh, provide loans and services specifically to the farmers. So they will all have some limited restricted access to the data and uh, for aiding them in the decision making process which finally ultimately helps our customers do better business. So these are primarily what are uh, key uh, uh, revenue models which are going to be and uh, any other value added services which will be adding on. We also would be creating a network of franchisees who are basically the local representatives who are going to be collecting the data, updating the data and providing some of the ground uh, support services uh, so that uh, if somebody wants physical uh, verification validation services it will be done through a network of such people so people could be uh, working part-time or full-time uh, with the eFarm team to provide these services and we will roll it out uh, as we scale uh, geographically so on day one it may not be available everywhere so but as you track the portal we will keep letting you know where all we have such ground uh, support activities so as I mentioned, the next couple of years, we're going to be focusing only on the data portal. But yes, of course, there are issues uh, which will start cropping up in terms of quality, in terms of uh, uh, transportation and logistics, which is also very, very key 
uh, areas of gaps. So, but we feel that once the data is there and people get used to the system, so after two years, we slowly want to start uh, setting up distributed network of collection and distribution centers. Once again, it may not be uh, a directly uh, capital investment coming from the company, but this could be along with our partners and collaborators once they all understand the system. So we will evolve a common set of simple grading rules and pricing uh, logic. And uh, you can look forward to eFarm slowly starting these kind of eFarm supported collection and aggregation distribution models so that you know, people can uh, then get, a, uh, instead of directly dealing and going to the farm, they can now procure through this network. Of course, this is not available day one. It might take two to three years down the line, but that is basically what we are growing into. So in summary, basically currently our model, revenue model is going to come from registration fees. We are not a commission agent, so we are not going to charge on the transaction which is actually happening between the buyer and seller. You can do a transaction for 10 rupees or 100 rupees or lakhs of rupees, but as long as the registration is done and is active, we are not going to be taking any percentage of the value of the transaction. So that is basically to clarify that we are not operating on a commission basis, but more similar to how these matrimonial portals or directories work where you pay for just using the service and registering your data into the directory. The registration fees and the usage fees for different categories of users will be posted in our website and every quarter we will be assessing our profitability and also the collective usage and the scaling which we want to do and there will be slight modifications. So for any details on the rates, kindly refer to the corresponding segment in our website where you will get the details about the rates which are